Good morning or good afternoon, Tigers. Today we'll be watching a Quizette video on Quizette 705. As always, please make sure that you write your last name, comma, first name, today's date, and that you circle the appropriate class color. Today I'm going to say that I'm purple. Number one on each day is going to require some work on your part. The easiest way to do this one is to solve each expression. So solve A, solve B, solve C, and solve D. And then read the instructions. It says, select all expressions that are equivalent to negative 7 minus negative 12. Remember that the word equivalent is just a fancy word for the word equals. So let's, re let's read that question one more time. Select all expressions that are equal to negative 7 minus negative 12. I'm a mathematician. You guys already know I've taken a lot of math classes. And I still don't know what this is equal to until I actually solve it. So negative 7 minus negative 12 needs to be rewritten as negative 7 plus positive 12. Please remember that every time you see subtraction, you must change it to the addition. So this changes into addition of the opposite. And the opposite of negative 12 is positive 12. You could also remember the math curse word, but I'm not going to say it. You're not going to say it, and you're not going to write it. But that's another way that you can solve this as well, using the math curse word. Okay, now we can see. Do these have the same sign or different signs? Those have the different signs. So when you see a different sign on an expression, you subtract them. 12 minus 7 is 5. Keep the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number is 12, and 12 happens to be positive. So my answer is positive 5. Okay, so the original expression is positive 5. I'm going to look for another expression that's equal to positive 5. There might be expressions that say negative 5 or 1 fifth. I don't know. There's going to there's gonna be some that seem like they're equal, but they're not equal. It's your job to be mathematically precise and find the right expressions or the equivalent ex expressions. Let's look at A. These have the same sign or different signs. Ask yourselves. Well, this one right here is invisible, so it's positive. I have a positive integer and a negative integer. Those are different signs. So different signs subtract. 12 minus 5 is, sorry, 12 minus 7 is 5. Keep the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number is negative. Then you are exact. Okay, is negative 5 equal to positive 5? No. No, it's not. So it cannot be A. B, these have same signs or different signs? Same sign. So same sign, add and keep. So 12 plus 7 is, let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now keep their sign, and their sign is negative. Now, is negative 19 equivalent to positive 5? No, it's not. So B cannot be equivalent. Let's look at C. Uh, negative 7 plus 12. Okay, these clearly have different signs. There's an invisible positive right there. Subtract them. Keep the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number is positive. Hey, is positive 5 equal to positive 5? Yes, it is. So C is an answer as well. Let's look at D. Sometimes when I'm teaching you integers, you guys forget basic operations of math. This is literally just asking you as if you were like in kindergarten or first grade. 7 plus 12. 7 plus 12 is 19. Same thing, same sign, yep. Add them together, keep their sign. Is positive 19 equivalent to positive 5? Nope. So the only possible answer here is C. C. Thank you guys for writing this down on your paper. Remember, I want everything exactly the way I have it. I want you to do this every single day. I want you to solve each expression, A, B, C, or D. Find out if it's equivalent to the original expression. Make sure you're mathematically precise by putting the right sign on each answer. Make sure you box each answer. You may or may not get tons of check marks on this when we grade it on Friday. Number two. Solve the expression 3 over 6 plus negative 2 over 9 minus negative 2. Now, I don't know about you, but this seems like it's going to be a lot of work. And I'm not going to lie to you. It is going to be a lot of work. But when you are taking a quiz at the end of this week, there will be a question like this, and it will be worth a lot of points. 
When you are taking a district test, there will be questions like this on the district test. Ms. Molina, how do you know that? Because I am part of the committee that writes those tests for the district. I know what's gonna be on there. I'm not gonna give you work that is pointless. I'm always gonna give you work that you're gonna see in the future. And you will also see this on the state test because I've seen this time and time again. Uh, expression involving fractions, positive and negative numbers. So I'm not doing this to harm you. I am doing this to train you so that when you see a question like this, you are more than ready. Okay, so three over six plus negative two over nine. We're gonna solve the fraction first. So we're gonna solve this first. And then we're gonna remember that um, we have to take away negative two, but we already know that we can't subtract. We have to change that to the addition of the opposite. So really what we're gonna end up doing at the end is adding two to whatever we get as a fraction. Now, now we can add those fractions together, but before we add those fractions together, we have to find the same common denominator. And the lowest common denominator here is the number 18. Because nine is a multiple of 18 and six is a multiple of 18. What does that mean? That means I can multiply nine by a number and it'll get me 18 on the bottom. And I can multiply six by a number and it'll get me 18 as a denominator as well. So nine times what gets me 18? 9 times 2. 6 times what gets me 18? 3. And what you multiply to the denominator, you have to multiply to the numerator. Remember, this is just maximizing the fractions. We're going to learn about this when we're doing ratios and proportions. But right here, I'm maximizing this fraction by 3. And I'm maximizing this, uh, or I'm increasing these fractions by a different number. So I'm increasing this fraction by 2, and I'm increasing this one by 3. Now let's just multiply straight across. Okay, now three times three is nine. Three times six is 18. Keep the same signs. Two times two is four, but remember it's negative four because there's a negative. And then nine times two is 18. Now that I have the same denominator, I can add the numerators. But here, do they have the same sign or do they have the different signs? I'm showing that they have different signs. So different signs subtract. Keep the sign of the bigger number than you are exact. 9 minus 4 is 5. Keep the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number is 9, and 9 happens to be positive, so it's going to be positive 5. And the numerator, numerator is going to be 18. Okay, now my last step is to add this 2 right here. But does 2 have a denominator? It's not visible, but it does have a denominator of 1. Now, what do I have to multiply to 1 to get me 18? 1 times 18. So I'm maximizing this fraction now by 18. All right, so the first fraction stays as 5 over 18 plus 2 times 18. Let's do 2 times 18 on the side. 8 times 2 is 16. Carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 1. Now that's 36. So 36 over, what's 1 times 18? 18. Whew, this is a really long question, but it's okay. We're doing it step by step. 5 plus 36 is 41 over 18. Remember, this is called an improper fraction. I want the mixed fraction. So on the side over here, I'm going to draw a box. And I'm going to try to solve it in that box. So I have 18 on the outside of the divisor, and it's being divided into 41. 18 goes into 41 two times. 18 times two, we already saw over here, is 36. Subtract that, you get five. Okay, so that's your remainder. So you're gonna write five over 18. So your mixed fraction is two, five over 18, or fifth, um, Five eighteenths. There you go. So you will get a check for this answer, forty-one over eighteen, as well as two fifth, eight two five eighteenths. Sorry, I'm having trouble saying that. Number three. Explain what a zero pair is and give an example of a zero pair. Okay, I'm just gonna use my own words because that's what I want you to do. So a zero pair. is 
an expression of two numbers that equals zero. All right, so I'll admit to you, I'm writing using academic language. Of course, I want you to use academic language, but if you can't put it into academic language, I just want to know your definition of the uh, desired vocabulary term. So in this case, it's zero pair. Some of you might say uh, two numbers that add together to equal zero. That's perfect. At least you know what it is. The academic language you will learn eventually because I'm always going to be repeating it. Now, here's an example. Your example could be different from mine. An example for me would be negative 5 plus 5. If I add those together, actually, I can't add them together. They have different signs, so I have to subtract them. 5 minus 5 is 0. Keep the sign of the bigger number. There's no bigger number, so it's just 0. That's a 0 pair. For Tuesday, I'm sorry, for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they're going to have different vocabulary terms. I would try to give them to you in the math notes so that you guys can have math notes on absolute value. Uh, and I forgot what the other terms were. I may or may not let you Google it at some point so that you guys can research it yourselves. Um, these are easier ones because you can just look up a definition, give an example that's given to you on the internet. All right, Tigers, good luck on this quizette. If you have any questions, remember the social skill of the week is asking for help. Make sure you raise your hand, make eye contact, and that you thank the person that's helping you, whether that's me, Mr. Mesa, or someone else in the room. Thank you.